fellow makers. I'm here with another project for the Whimsy Stamps Halloweeners design team. Today's project is going to mainly showcase the Whimsy Stamps Build a Graveyard die set, and that is a WSD486 is the item number. For this die set, I'm not going to use all of them. I'm going to use mostly the smaller things. So I'm going to use the smaller gate, the um, skulls, the bats, uh, the and then the, the two smaller of the tombstones for this project. And then I'm also going to use the Whimsy Stamp Slimline Meadow die set, WSD518. I know that this is a springtime die set, but I'm going to make it into a graveyard. And now for the, the background here, uh, I have two options and I haven't quite decided until I kind of get into the, the making mode, uh, which one I'm going to be doing, but I'm considering making the background area, the tree, silhou tree silhouette stamp. It's a rubber stamp and look how big it is. So it would cover the whole background of like an A2 card, but there will be plenty for this top area of the slimline card. This is item number DA1021. So I may make my own background this time, I'm tempted, but if not, um, I always have this wonderful Nevermore paper pack to fall back on. They have some wonderful things that I could use, even though this is a giant moon. How cool would that be having this giant moon kind of just kind of creeping in just a little bit with that, those branches um, from the background. So I think that might be a really wonderful option if I choose not to stamp my own. So those are a couple of ways that I might go with this project. So I'm inviting you along with me to get started and let's see what we end up with. I'm making paper to cut tombstones out of the Build a Graveyard die set from Whimsy, Whimsy Stamps. I just wanted to get some color on some paper so it's not perfect and that's great because I want these to be old looking and I'm going to probably put some grit paste on them. I have hickory smoke, I have pumice stone, weathered wood, these darker little areas I flicked some forest moss on there and then in this corner I have a little bit of tea dye. That was the brown that I could was in reach and the weathered wood kind of adds a little bit of a blue gray tone to s some of it. So when I cut them out, there will be a, a variation in their color, but a similarity at the same time. So I'm gonna dry this, cut out my tombstones, and then we're gonna start building our graveyard. This is how the paper turned out now that it's dry so that I can cut the tombstones out of it. And then I cut two bits out with the slimline meadow die. So I cut this and I put the inset in and you can see there's these little areas right here where you will uh, line up the die and then when you cut it, it makes this little window. So this one has a window in it and this will be the bottom portion with the moon coming out of it. And I want to color this with Distress Oxides in green to try and make it green, but still have that dark black underneath so it looks kind of like grass at night. And the cool thing about this die is that when you cut it, see how it makes the hills so that you can tuck things in under it. So that's pretty neat. I'm going to be tucking my tombstones under there. Then I thought if I was doing this, I could mask it off along here if I wanted and try and do that green and, you know, have the frame another color. But instead, I took the frame and I cut it one way on a second piece, and then I flipped it over and I cut it the other way. I lined it up and cut it this way on the same piece, and then I just took my scissors and trimmed what was left and that made a little frame that I can leave black and I can put it around this like that. More things. This is Distress Mix Media Heavy Stock, so it is a little yellow uh, to begin with, but I sprayed it with some 
Distress Stain in Picket Fence, which is the white, kind of a little bit opaque, and then added some antique linen, some a tiny bit of hickory smoke, which ends up looking like a lot of hickory smoke, but it really didn't seem that much when I first sprayed it on. And then I let it dry and it seemed a little dark, so went ahead and went back over it with another spray of the white picket fence to kind of uh, knock down the color a little bit. I'm gonna be cutting some of the skulls out with that. And I also decided I will probably cut a few skulls out of the same color as my tombstones, because if I wanna put them on the tombstone, I'll just uh, blend a little color to make them darker on there. And these have three little bats. So I went ahead and cut three bats out and I cut four fences so that I could layer them when I put them on my little graveyard. So I have four of those cut out. So I'm gonna cut these skulls. And then I just realized when I was looking at these that I think, <laughs> I think I need to cut two more of these so that I can put them on the other side, maybe. Am I getting too picky? Is that too picky? But I'm just thinking, see how the small side kind of is facing the same direction, but if I cut it out the other way, then the small side is here and the larger side meets in the middle. Okay, that might be too picky, but I think I'm going to do it. So when we come back, two new pieces of fence and some skulls.
At this point, I have the base card cut from just some heavy stock black card stock that I get off of Amazon. And then I trimmed the piece from the Nevermore paper pack so that it fits just behind the window. And then it, uh, normally I would want it to be even all the way across, but because I'm sticking these in here, I'm fine with just having it behind the window up here. My frame, I have put some, so I added some more. Uh, you saw me scribble on the grass areas with the peeled paint distressed watercolor pencil and then watercolor that in. I went back and I added some brown with the walnut stain watercolor pencil. So that really added the color. When I put the peeled paint and the forest moss distress oxides on there, they didn't seem to really do much, but they worked together well with the distress crayons to just kind of add a little bit of color to the, the hillside here. I have some bats kind of laying in there. I decided to go with just a sentiment that said chills from the chills, goosebumps, shivers uh chills word die set from whimsy stamps and so i cut three of those out of black craft stock from ideology so i cut all of those out i'm going to just attach them all together so it's kind of thick and then i will just offset it just a little bit with uh one that i cut from the same gray card stock that i cut all of the little skulls out of so I'll offset it just a little bit so that it kind of stands out when I put it on here I have grit paste on the outside frame so you can see that I have crypt grit paste so it's really pretty and pretty neat thing it has these black flecks in it and it turns kind of a green color so you can hopefully see it on there all those little black flecks and then it gives it a bit of texture also and I wanted these to look like old tombstones that were kind of crumbling and so that's why I added the grit paste to these just to kind of give them that old crumbly look now I can add a little bit more to it I can make it look a little like moss and add some green peeled paint distress crayon or I can add a little uh, walnut stain to make it a little darker I'm not sure what I might do with those but uh, what I do want to do is I want to add both the walnut stain distress crayon and the Rusty Hinge Distress Crayon, you can tell these are favorites because they're just a mess. Uh, I want to add that to the grit paste on here because I want these to look old and rusty.
I'm very pleased with how this cemetery card turned out using the slimline meadow die of all things and I just think it looks great I love it you know that I always have to have a couple of graveyard makes when I am doing my Halloween things if you have followed me at all you know that I have my cemetery makes that uh, I do and so I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. In fact, it was actually a very quick make. I did this in just a few hours, so it didn't take all that long, even waiting for the Distress Crypt paste to dry so that I could put the crayon on there and then putting it all together. It went together in just a couple of hours and I'm done. And you know what? It's not even 2 a.m. So how about that? So I can go to bed at a normal hour tonight. But um, I thank you for watching. And if you have any questions about any of the techniques that I used in making this card, please, as always, contact me through my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com. And there is a contact section in the right-hand column. I'll be glad to answer your questions to the best of my ability. And I thank you again so much for your support and for watching this video. And I hope that you have a very crafty day.